Okay, hey everyone. So I wanted to give you guys the jacaranda trees are raining on me. And I thought my hair was looking kind of good today, so I thought I'd turn my, the camera around and uh, do this one facing the camera. Sentado en este banca, esta banca, right by the Angel de la Independencia. I think that's what it's called, the Angel de la Independencia. But uh, my cubrebocas is blowing away. But anyway, I wanted to give you guys, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you guys a couple of my first impressions of Mexico City. So I've been here for a couple days and I have two main impressions. The first impressions, and they're both pretty understandable. The first impression is that people aren't as warm as they've been throughout my travels in other places, in smaller cities and towns throughout Mexico. Um, but Mexico, is, Mexico City is a city of 10 million people in the city proper and 25 million in the metro region. So it's one of the largest cities in the world. Uh, so you can kind of understand why people aren't as warm and open and friendly as they would be in some of the places that even have just like a million people. So that was my first impression. My second impression is that it might just be for here for the city center, but basically when you step out your apartment, you can find anything you would ever want. I'm staying not too far from here in La Zona Rosa, uh, pretty much right in the center, I guess. It's, it's pretty in the center of the city. But I step out my apartment and there's a Korean bakery, there's a fish restaurant, there's a Asian noodle restaurant where I had dinner last night. Um, a massage place uh, on the up and up. It's not like uh, one of the funny massage places, but I'm sure you can find that if you, if you were looking for it, uh, which I'm not, but <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's there. Um, and yeah, there's just so much, and then, uh, and then there's and a massage place, which I'm gonna go do, I think, in a little bit. I'm gonna get a massage. I had a really super stressful entrance into the into Mexico City, which I'll tell you guys in about in just a little bit. But um, yeah. There's just so much to see, to do, uh, to experience, so much just all around the city that uh, I'm really looking forward to check it out. So yeah, those are my two first impressions of Mexico City. Wow, so pretty. They have the jacarandas trees that they had in Guadalajara. And this is the Fuente de Cibeles. It is not the Fuente de Cibeles as they have in Spain, but it comes from Spain. There is a very famous Fuente de Cibeles in Spain, but this is the Fuente de Cibeles. And it has to be, it's the same design, same name and everything from the uh, fountain in Spain. Pretty cool. Okay, so here's a little bit more information on the Fuente de Cibeles. So it says La Fuente, la fuente Original de la Ciudad de la Cual es copia exacta de la, de la que aquí se presenta. So it's an exact copy of the Fuente de Cibeles in, in Spain. Está ubicada en la confluencia del Paseo de la Castellana y la Calle de Alcalá. That has to be in Madrid. De la Ciudad de Madrid, yeah. So in, the, in Madrid. And then for a little bit further down, it says, Esta copia ha sido donada a la Ciudad de México por su comunidad de residentes españoles. Oh, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. So it's donated by the Spanish residents here in Mexico City. So yeah, awesome. Love the uh, flashback to Madrid. Okay, so I wanted to send a big thank you to David for becoming a new patron on patreon.com. Thank you so much, David. You're awesome. And I also wanted to send a big uh, thank you to John for making a one-time donation on my square page. Thank you, John. You are awesome as well. So thank you guys both so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so if you're coming into Mexico and you're driving a foreign-plated car, you want to have all your documents in order. You want to have a temporary import permit. And then if you're coming here to Mexico City, you want to have a permiso de circulación. And then beyond that, I think it's good for 14 days, but beyond that, you'll want to have your car, the emissions checked with the local government. And that's basically just so you can avoid any problems that you might have with the police or, any, or anything else. So you want to have the temporary import permit and you also want to have the permiso de circulación. If you don't have those, you can really run into problems and then this is what could happen. Okay, so I was coming into the city and I probably wasn't in Mexico City, the city proper 
limits for more than 10 minutes when the police start to pull me over. The, I see some um, police officers on the left side of my car signaling me over to the side of the street. And uh, it's not the first time that it's happened driving in Mexico. It's happened several times in Guadalajara and uh, also in Ciudad del Carmen. I made a video on that. But uh, they pulled me over and I, I was really relaxed about it. I didn't really think you know, too much of it at the time. I thought I had all my documents in order. I have, uh, you know, I'm here illegally. I have my temporary visa. I have the temporary import permit. I have all the documentation that goes with the temporary import permit. And to illustrate to the police officers that it is indeed valid throughout the duration of my tourist visa. So I was pretty relaxed about it. I pull over to the side of the road um, and the officer just starts, you know, going down through the list of what I have and what I don't. Um, and so what I didn't have was I didn't have the permiso de circulación. And that's basically for the cars that aren't registered in Mexico City or the state of Mexico that you'll need a the circulation permit while you're here in the city. So and that was his sticking point. He said he was a $8,000 fine. I later learned and not $8,000, I'm sorry, 8,000 peso fine, which is about $400. And uh, I later find out that it was a uh, 1,000 peso fine, 1,000 some odd pesos, which is about 50 or $75. So, I mean, obviously he was lying and uh, it was just obvious from his demeanor and uh, how he was treating me, how he was just really very aggressive, that he, he was just looking for a bribe, looking, who you know, just looking to get money out of me. And so, um, I was considering playing it through, just going to the where they would impound the car, take the ticket. It sounded a little fishy to me, but you know, and I thought I thought that by doing that, I thought that by going to the impound lot, that I'd actually be given, you know, what the what the law and the system system says is 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 accurate. But basically, I didn't do that because at the time, I had Binks in the car, I had all my stuff in the car. And really, I think the bottom line for me was that I didn't feel safe. I was in a city that I don't know. I was in a completely new place. And I was also with two police officers that were obviously just looking for a bribe. They were just looking for money. And they were being very, really aggressive. So, you know, being in a new city and then going off to a place that I had no idea what, where they were taking me. And then two police officers who were very aggressive I, uh, I just didn't feel like I could do it. I, it was just better for me personally, uh, physically, my physical safety, and um, you know, to uh, follow the police officers, uh, to, to go ahead and just pay the police officers and be done with it. It's, it is what it is. And you know, that's the unfortunate situation sometimes when you're driving in Mexico and living in Mexico. Compared to everything else, it, it's really pretty light. Yeah, it was, it was quite a bit of money and it really sucked and it, did kind of deteriorate my, you know, confidence in, you know, it just always sucks when, when you know that the police force isn't to, to be, when you can't really re rely on the police force and the police force is, uh, you know, shaking you down and basically being, you know, trying to get money, money out of you. And uh, it really sucks, but um, it's really very minuscule in comparison to what uh, a lot of people face. You know, I just in the past video I made in, Puebla they had I was talking with a lady whose son was disappeared and um, her son went missing and the police had done nothing basically nothing so it's really the uh, really one of the real real hard parts and uh, unfortunate parts about living in Mexico and you know life here in Mexico it's it's really it's really not good so but it does happen and it is something that's that people should be aware of uh, if you're coming to Mexico, or if, especially if you're driving in Mexico, and um, I think the best, side, best best advice I can give for that is that you just have all your documentation in order, you know, as much as you can. You know, just leave leave nothing to chance. You know, I tr I tried to prepare myself for the uh, permiso de circulación here in Mexico City. I had heard about it. I asked on a group, and I guess it just kind of escaped my mind. So, you know, yes, I was. Uh, you know, non-compliant with local law, but, um, you know, it's just one of those times that makes you grateful for, you know, coming from a country that does have 
a non-corrupt police force and it's you know one of the unfortunate things that you know i don't like saying about mexico but you know it is something that if you're coming to mexico that it is really you know you do need to be aware of so um you know just have all your documents in order and uh you know be safe in general you know it's a it's a beautiful country i mean i think if you know you see and see throughout all my videos there's just such an amazing rich richly diverse uh country culturally diverse culturally rich and uh you can just have such an amazing time um so but there is that there is there's always with with good there's always the bad so that was my experience coming into mexico city Okay, so I just went to the tourist police office to ask them what I do after the 14 days are up. And surprise, surprise, they had no idea what to do. But they were very cordial in their incompetence. And they said return Monday and we're gonna figure it out together. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna figure it out together. Okay, so here's the Embassy of the United States right in front of us. It's this uh, white building back there with a sign on top. And I thought it'd be interesting to see. I always think it's kind of interesting to see the US embassies when you go to different countries. And for some reason, they're always barricaded like this. They're just always these massive fortresses. So I just thought I'd give you guys a little look at the Embassy of the United States of America in Mexico. Okay, so here we are back on the street that I'm staying at. It's a Stockholmo. So Stockholm, obviously in Spanish, if you didn't catch that one, but there it is. So just to show you a couple guys, uh, just to show you guys a couple of things I was talking about. Just passed by the Panaderia, a little hotel here. Here's the up and up on the up and up massage place. Then you need to ask for a cita, a uh, an appointment. You can't just drop in. And let's see, you have this noodle place up here that I was talking about. Beyond that is the Korean bakery. And I don't think I'll take you guys in to see the Airbnb today, but I'll leave that for next time. I think this is the noodle place that I was... No, this is the noodle place. It's a popular lunch spot as we can see. Very popular Korean bakery. Yummy yummy. And uh, yeah, it's wonderful. So very walkable, very pleasant street. And there's the uh, seafood restaurant. So I think that that'll be it for today. Uh, appreciate you guys coming along. I'm here in Mexico City for the, at least the next month and a half, at least until May 1st. I might stay longer, uh, So, but that's yet to be determined. So lots of videos coming from here in Mexico City, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.